So I think I turned off my hearing. Does it snap? Good level? Excellent. Okay, so thanks for the introduction from Dan Brown. As he said, my presentation today is going to be about how we use the for creativity. Um, here, Dan already covered this, but if I does it correctly, I'm the designer of Rosie North Productions, uh, Toronto Game Development Studio. We're just launching our first commercial title, Flips Twist Your World for the Week, and we're also licensed developers on all three major platforms. So, it's really no secret to say that uh, computers have, are a driving force in all of our lives. They've been responsible or uh, involved in every major revolution of the last half century, be it scientific, engineering, even social revolutions have been powered by computers. All right. So when I was looking over the, uh, the other talks uh, for today's presentations, I found we've got uh, pres uh, presenters talking about how computers are used in security, how they're used in energy and robotics, and how they're used in information management. So lots of ideas about how computers are practical. Uh, and of course, these are absolutely vital. Uh, and these speakers are much better equipped to talk about these kinds of issues than I am. What I want to talk about is how computers are creative how they're actually freeing us to express things we could never do before. Specifically, I want to say that computers are the single most powerful tool for creative expression that any artist, any individual has available to them today. So let me unpack a little bit what I mean when I say creative expression. What I mean is I have an idea. Maybe it's something about the past, a memory. Maybe it's an interpretation of what I'm seeing now or a thought about what could be coming in the future. Maybe it's pure fiction, something I've come up with out of my own head, or a pure abstraction. How can I get that idea out of my head? How can I share it with you? Throughout our history, we've been developing new ways to get these ideas across. We started with sounds and music, which let us convey feelings, impressions, uh, urgency, fear, um, excitement. We developed pictograms that let us talk about people, things, events. Each time, we're starting to add to our vocabulary, add to what we can actually contribute from one head to another. When we developed a spoken written word, our bandwidth exploded. Now we could suddenly talk about abstractions. We could talk about the relationships between things. We could talk about uncertainties, might, could, would. We developed drawing, painting, photography, which let us convey the richness of the visual world we see around us, all that detail the idea that uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. We developed theater and film, which led us to capture motion and action and be able to share that as well. So with each of these innovations, we've massively expanded what it is we can share from one mind to another. What digital media add to this is choice. For the first time ever, a, a piece of uh, media content that someone has created can actually change and adapt and modify itself depending on what you do. If you imagine, what would have happened if Hamlet hadn't dithered around for three acts before killing his evil uncle? We don't know. What would have happened if he'd said to his father's ghost, no, I'm not going to kill anyone. That's not going to solve anything. We don't know. Shakespeare only gave us one narrow glimpse into Hamlet's world, no matter what the audience wants, says, or does. For the first time in history now, digital media gives us the opportunity to expand that out and show people not just one story in a world, but give them the whole world. To give it a little bit of an example of this, I'm going to uh, look at a game called Facade. This is an experiment in interactive fiction that was created by Michael Mateus and Andrew Stern of Procedural Arts. The way Facade works is a little bit like a, a three-hander short play but you're the third character. You've been invited over to your friend's house, uh, Trip and Grace, and they want you to come by for drinks, just to chat. And as the evening goes on, you find that they're starting to have problems in their relationship. You can freely type whatever you want to them, and depending on what you say, how you act, where you stand even, it'll change the way the evening goes and ultimately change the course of their relationship. Because of all the uh, number of possibilities going on here, the creators couldn't just write a play. They couldn't write even 100 plays for each different branch. What they had to do is write a playwright. Facade is actually an AI system that determines 
on the fly how these characters should react using canned phrases that have been pre-recorded. It's not always perfect. You've got a lot of situations where they'll do something a little bit irrational or where did that come from? But the sheer depth that you can get out of this compared to any single script is quite impressive. And this is a very early example. This was done, I believe, in 2004, 2005. Um, much better stuff is coming out all the time. But you can download this free if you want to check it out. This idea of having the system adapt to what the player does is present in all games. And so they're the, going to be the focus of my discussion about how computers enable creativity. Anything from Farmville to Call of Duty, anywhere that the player can, through their actions, leave a mark on what the world looks like, how it progresses, how the story goes, is doing this kind of thing. It's uh, a computer system that has become a co-creator, modifying the world that the player experiences autonomously when you're not there to modify it for them. To take the example of my studio's own work, Flip's Twisted World for the Wii. We're, uh, we are actually a very small studio for most of the production. Um, we're currently nine people. For most of its history, we were actually smaller than that. There's not any chance we could have individually drawn and rendered every frame that you ever see in the game. We don't know if you're going to turn left or turn right. We don't know if you're going to attack that enemy or run past him. We don't even know if you're uh, going to see this particular vista. What we had to do was, uh, instead of creating individual pieces of content, we had the whole team work together to create a system that can generate those moments of gameplay on demand, depending on any of the millions of factors, whether you've deked left or right, whether you've used the flail or the watering can, whether you're wearing the blue costume or the green. What this gets down to is an extension of the old phrase, give a man a fish, you feed them for a day, teach someone to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. Computers have that same kind of magnifying effect on creativity. Sure, you can paint a picture, and you can show someone a moment. If you teach the computer to paint, you can show someone a whole world. This dramatically magnifies the power uh, to express ideas of anyone, any creative individual, who learns to master these systems.